Hello, all of Mark Post One. Welcome back to another IPC lesson with me today. Uh, we have been thinking about history, things that have happened in the past. But today we're moving on to think about science. I love science because you can link science to history or geography or other parts of our curriculum. You can link science to maths. Science is everywhere. Everything that you are sitting on or sitting near or touching or using has something to do with science. And we're going to think about exactly that idea today. We're thinking about materials and their properties. What's a material? Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, a material, my clothes are materials. And, and you are right. But this is a material. These are materials. This is a material. And they were all examples of different materials. Materials are the things that other things are made from. The stuff that things are made from are materials. Have a look around you. What can you see that things are made from? I've held up some examples already. What examples of materials can you think of? Under here, I've got eight. I wonder how many of my eight you can think of. Look around your room. There'll be things where you are sitting right now. What's it made of? Look at it. Decide. What's it made of? Oh, what's that made of? Hmm. Oh, what's this made of? Have a think about those materials. Some things have got more than one sort of material. We've got this as an example. Most of it is made from one material, but there are other materials there too. How many materials have you thought of? Three? Five? Eight? Let's have a look at mine. Here are four to start with. Some of these words you might know. Some of these words might be new. Wood. Things can be made out of wood. Is there anything wooden in the room that you're sitting in now? Maybe your device is on top of something that's wooden. The laptop or the tablet might be resting on a wooden table. Plastic. Plastic. Now, we know that plastic is very bad for the animals in the ocean, and we're trying to do lots in Diani to help stop plastic getting into the ocean, but this is a very useful material. Can you think of anything that's made out of plastic? Our next material, metal. Look around the room. Can you see anything that is made out of metal? And then this one here, ceramic. This might be a new word for some people. Ceramic. There are lots of ceramic things in people's houses. Perhaps if somebody at home has a hot cup of tea in the morning, this cup is probably made out of ceramic. The sink, the basin in your bathroom, the white one where you wash your hands. That white basin could be ceramic. The toilet might be ceramic as well. Can you think of anything else that might be ceramic in your house? That's the first four. Here's the second four. Fabric. Fabric. This sort of clothing, it's made from fibres that are woven together to make this sort of material. Fabric. Stone. Now the walls of your house might be coral rock. Some people might live in a house made from stone. Other things in your house could be made of stone. Perhaps you've got a stone table, or you might have stone statues in your house. Glass. Can you think of anything that's made of glass? And then the last one, paper. Now we've got paper and in a similar material, there's also card and cardboard. What's made of paper in your house? Look on the walls. Is there something hanging on a wall that might be made from paper? Or perhaps 
you're reading something that might be made from paper. Okay, think of something that's made from wood. There's one hiding under here. I wonder if mine matches yours. What are you thinking of that's made of wood? Mine was a wooden spoon. Anybody else got a wooden spoon at their house? Plastic. What were you thinking of that was made from plastic? Mine was a plastic cup, like the ones we use at school when people have forgotten their water bottles, which also might be made from plastic. Metal. Mmm, the kitchen is a great place to find things that are made from metal. If you are rummaging around in the kitchen, make sure you're doing it safe and a grown-up has said that you're allowed to. Metal. I thought of a fork. A fork has got these four tines, but all of it is made from metal. And then ceramic, those things like pots, crockery, toilets and sinks, ceramic. I used this example already. There's that ceramic mug. I had a coffee this morning, and my coffee was in a ceramic mug. Down here, fabric. Could have this t-shirt. All these trousers, all my shoes, mostly fabric. Let's have a look. Ah, it's a scarf. A scarf is made from fabric. Stone. Hmm, this is a tricky one. In the past, lots of things were made from stone because people could get it easily and spend time shaping it. But nowadays, mm, stone isn't used quite so much unless you're thinking about building. Stone. Mine's a statue. Somebody might have this to help decorate their house. A stone statue. Glass. What are you thinking of that's made from glass? Maybe you have to look through glass to see better. Maybe you're looking around your house and you can see a, a cupboard full of glasses. Mine was an aqua mist bottle. Those tall, thin glass bottles. And then the last one, paper. What were you thinking of that's made from paper? Were you thinking of a book? Do you think I chose a book? I chose the newspaper that you can buy from the supermarket to find out what's going on in the world. All of these are made from different things. They are different materials. Wood, plastic, metal, ceramic, fabric, stone, glass, and paper. There are other sorts of materials too, but these are the ones that we're going to concentrate on. Right. In your class dojo today, I have put lots and lots of objects, some that we've seen before in our IPC learning, some that are brand new. I had to put this one in because it made me nostalgic. When you feel nostalgic, it's when you get a nice warm feeling when you're thinking about something a long time ago. This reminds me of my grandma's house. This object here is a phone on wheels made from one of the materials that we've looked at. On your class dojo, you've got this. And you've also got this. If you've got a printer at home, I want you to chop these out and sort them into the right section on this sorting diagram. So decide, is it made from wood, or plastic, or metal, or ceramic, or fabric, or stone, or what's that number, what's this one, what was this one down here? Glass, or paper. You decide what they're made from, sort them in and stick them in. You can do that now. If you don't have a printer, you can stick around with me because I'm going to sort them. But you do need to talk to the tablet. So when I say, what do you think this one's made from? You say, plastic. Otherwise, it's just me doing the learning. And I've done this already. If you think, oh, Mrs. Scullion, but I'm really enjoying watching the video and I'd like to watch you first and then have a go myself, that's also OK. All right, then. We are going to sort all of these objects into this sorting diagram. We're looking at the main material. So some of them will have perhaps wood and metal. We're looking for the main one. 
the material that is the most. This is a lovely example to start with. We've got this Barbie. I can make Barbie a bit bigger. We can see she might have some fabric around here and not long hair. What do you think the main material that Barbie is made from is? You tell me. Do you think Barbie is made from wood? Stone? <laughs> can you imagine? Oh, look at my beautiful stone Barbie. Glass. Ah, I'm not sure that would be a good idea. We'll talk more about that later. No, of course, Barbie is mostly plastic. Let's have a look at the next one. Oh, it's an aeroplane. I'll make it a bit bigger so that you can see it. What's this aeroplane made out of, everybody? You tell me. Yes, you're quite right. It is made... Oh, let's move Barbie out of the way. It's made from stone. The famous stone... Air... Oh, no, that wouldn't fly. No, it can't be stone. It's made from paper. Well done. Okay, the next one. Here is a teddy bear. About 120 years old. Very, very beautiful old teddy bear. This one, let's make him a bit bigger. And of course, we're looking at this teddy bear and we're thinking, is he made from wood? Is he made from metal? Is he made from fabric? Is he made from glass? What do you think? I think he's made from fabric. Is that what you said? Brilliant. Okay, oh, look at this next one. We looked at this already as part of our IPC. This is the chamber pot. Now, if you missed this one, the chamber pot was used back in the days when people didn't always have a toilet in their house. So this pot would go underneath the bed. So during the night, if people woke up and they needed the toilet, they could pull the pot out from underneath their bed, use the pot as a toilet, and then put it back underneath the bed. And then in the morning, they take it over to their window and throw it all out into the street. Ooh, gross. What do you think it's made from? Tricky one, this. I think this is made from wood, plastic, metal, ceramic, fabric, stone, glass, or paper. Well, this was actually made from a type of clay, then covered in a type of paint, and then put somewhere very, very hot to make it go hard so we could use it for a long, long time. This is made from ceramic. Ceramic. I'm pretty glad that we don't have to use these anymore and that most people, certainly people at our school, have toilets in their house. And a lot of people's toilets are still made from ceramic. They just look very different. And instead of throwing them out into the street in the morning, we press the flush and away it goes. Okay, the next one, we're looking at this model train. Now it does come in a box, which is made from cardboard, but we're not looking at the box, we're looking at the train. What do you think the train is made from here? Wood, plastic, metal, ceramic, fabric, stone, glass or paper. What do you think? A paper train wouldn't last very long, would it? So we're not going to think it's paper. Uh, could be wood, but it's going to be tough to roll along the tracks if it's made from wood. Plastic, well, when this was invented, plastic was too expensive to make. No, this train is made from metal. A metal train. How many metal toys can you think of? Do you have any metal toys in your house? Hmm. The next one, it's a doll. Oops, it's a doll from a very long time ago. This was one of our examples from the Toy Museum. Where do you think this old doll goes? What's it made from? I love reading people's ideas about why it was the same as the Barbie. Somebody said they've both got moving legs. Wow, absolutely right, well spotted. Very clever for the person thousands of years ago to make a doll with moving legs. What do you think? Stone could be, but it's not. It's made from wood. This is a carved wooden doll. Now we have lots of carved toys when you walk up and down 
Danny Beach Road here. Lots of people have carving toys or statues to sell to people to make some money. People have been doing that for thousands of years. Okay, let's look at the next one. Ah, Meccano. This set is a hundred years old, but you can still buy Meccano in the shops today. The box is made from wood, but what about the toy inside? What do you think Meccano is made from? Well, if you just said metal, you're absolutely right. Hey, look, two metal toys. Two toys made from metal in that section. Ha, I can't, can, have you got any metal toys at home? I mean, we saw Zarava has a metal go-kart that he rides around on. It's got some plastic on it, but these toys are small to use with your hands. Do you have any metal toys at your house? I wonder, I'd be really, if you do, take a picture, send it on your portfolio. Okay. Here's the next one. Ah, this one that made me feel nostalgic. Going to stay at my grandma's house and being able to play with this phone. Of course, it's not made from stone. It's not made from glass. This one is made from plastic. Now, when I say this is from my grandma's house, it wasn't my grandma's when she was a child. This didn't exist when my grandma was a child. This is something that my mum and dad bought and left at her house. So I had something to play with there. Don't start thinking that Mr. Scullion's grandma had fancy plastic toys like this. <laughs> okay, the next one is a new picture. We haven't seen this young lady before. This is a soft doll. So we've already seen one doll made from plastic. Have a look at this young lady and decide what is she made from. Tell me what you think. If you like, you can touch on your tablet the right section or point to where you think it should go. She is made from fabric, just like this other soft toy. Okay, next one, we did see a bright green example of this yesterday. This is a boomerang, a modern boomerang. It's got the three things, it's brightly coloured and it's made from plastic. Excellent. Now you do get some boomerangs that are made from foam as well. That could be another material there, but that is also sometimes in the plastic family. Where's the plastic gone? Plastic's here. Okay. Hmm, not many things made from paper so far. Right, the scalette trick. Remember, we're looking for the biggest material that's on this one. So there, are, there is a metal track that runs around it, but that's not the material that's used most. Which material is used most? Of course, it's another plastic one. Huh. Stone, glass, nothing in those sections yet. Okay, have a look at this. Remember we said this was about 150 years old? It's the hoop and the stick. And basically you roll the hoop and you try and keep it up by hitting it or pushing it with the stick. It wobbles all over the place, you've got to try and keep it going straight, so it rolls and rolls and rolls. But what's it made from? It's made from metal. Oh, wow! Lots of old toys were made from metal. How interesting. Right. The Chinese yo-yo or the diabola. You can see straight away, I'm sure, what that's made from. Remember, this is one of the oldest toys ever. People have been using this for a very, very long time. Look, different shapes, different sizes. One stick, two sticks, no sticks. But this is made from wood. And here we have the boomerang. About 800 years old. Started out life as a weapon for hunting birds or for hurting people. Now we've got a modern one that's a toy. Where does this one go? What do you think this boomerang is made from? Yes, it's obvious, isn't it? 
obvious that this is also made from wood. And now we've got this very, very old spinning top. I love the pictures that people drew of the new spinning tops. They're bright colours. Some of them have even got flashing lights on spinning tops now. Not back when this was being used. Now, if you look carefully, I think this looks like a nut. And you can see, if you're looking at it really carefully, it's got some cracks in it from the grain of the material, which is another wooden one. Oh, look. Very old, very old, very old, all made from wood. These three here are ancient, and so far, they're all made from wood. Here is another ancient toy, where we've got modern ones now. What are these ancient marbles made from? These were Roman, what were these ancient marbles made from? It's our first stone toy. Our first stone toy. And then here's the modern day one. This is a nice picture of some marbles. Can you tell what they're made from? They are quite shiny, they're quite see-through. Those are big clues, but these are made from glass. You can get marbles that are made from really, really, really hard plastic, and you can get marbles that are made from ceramic. These White ones are sometimes made from ceramic. And then our last thing, oh, this is old too. This is about 500 years old. Can you tell what it's made from? <laughs> this is glass. It is a glass, and the clue is in the name. A glass is made from glass. Brilliant. Have a look at your sorting diagram if you've managed to cut it and stick it. Most toys, wood, plastic, metal, some toys, fabric, not many toys made of paper, not many toys made of stone or glass or ceramic. We'll talk more about this another time. Right, here are some questions that I'd like you to think about. I'm going to talk about them as well, but I do want you to think about it. Why are toys not normally made out of glass? Think about who they're for. Why don't people make toys out of glass? What would happen if your racing car was made out of glass? Hmm, I think it could be dangerous because glass is brittle. It breaks easily. It's fragile. You can damage it. And when you break glass, you can have very sharp bits. That's not a good idea for toys. Why are shirts not normally made out of wood? Would you like to wear a wooden shirt? Do you think it would be comfortable? And the trouble with wood is because it's hard, it's not very flexible. With my shirt, I can move up and down and it stretches to let me do that. If it was made from wood, I'd be stuck in one position all day. It wouldn't be very comfortable at all. And then, why are teddy bears not normally made out of metal? Well, would you like a metal teddy bear? Oh, I'll just snuggle down with ding, 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 my real ding, ding, really cuddly metal teddy bear. It wouldn't be soft. It wouldn't be comfortable, would it? I can, yeah, and it would be very, very heavy. Can you imagine climbing out of bed in the morning and your metal teddy bear falls out of bed and lands on your toe? Oh, no thank you. Right, let's think about why some materials are used. Oh, we'll think about that. There we go. We'll think about their properties. What makes them good? Now, think about windows. Why is glass good for windows? Tell me your idea. Why is, why is glass good for windows? Well, a lot of you out there might be thinking, you can see out of it. Yeah, it's see-through. It's transparent. You can see through it, which means you can have some light into your house. If you couldn't see through windows, all houses would be really, really dark. There's another property of glass, a property of the material that makes it a good choice. 
I wonder if you thought of this one. Have a look at this picture. It's a bit like the weather today, right now. Why is glass good on a rainy day for windows? <laughs> yeah, it's waterproof. Water can't get through glass, so by having glass for windows, you keep everything inside dry because the glass is waterproof. Can you imagine going for a drive in the rain in your car and all of the windows are not made from glass? They're made from maybe like this fabric that you can see through. But all of the rain would come through that fabric. So glass is good for windows because it's waterproof and it's transparent. You can see through it. There are other reasons too. Let's have a look at another example. Right, why is plastic good for baby toys? Why is plastic good for baby toys? Tell me what you think. Any ideas? I mean, this toy will be familiar to lots of people. Maybe you said, well, because you can make it in bright colours. Great idea. You can make it in bright colours. Uh, maybe you said, because it doesn't break easily. Imagine if these were made out of glass. Babies love to throw things could be very dangerous. Or stone. Maybe stone would be too heavy. Plastic is nice and light. Here's another reason why plastic is good for baby toys. What's this baby doing? He's doing what all babies do and mouthing something. He's putting it in his mouth so he can understand it a little bit better. The great thing about plastic is you can clean it really, really easily. Imagine if this was made of paper and the baby's put it in his mouth, and it'd go all soft and mushy, and you'd have to throw it away. This plastic, you can wipe it clean, or give it a wash, and then it's ready for baby to use again. So everything we use, we use for a reason, because of the properties. So this material plastic is great because you can clean it easily, but you can make it bright colours, and it's light. Here are some of the words that we can use to describe properties. And we'll be thinking more about this tomorrow. Some things are chosen because they are hard. So plastic for this hard hat is chosen because it's hard and it will protect somebody if something falls on their head because this material is hard. Thinking about fabric, well, fabric is used because it is soft and flexible. You wouldn't want a cuddly toy made out of hard plastic because you can't really snuggle with that in the same way. So this fabric is soft. One of the properties is it's soft and flexible. Now we've got two things in this picture. I'll try and make it a bit bigger. We can see the wood for the part of the roof and we can see the ladder that the man is standing on. Both of those things are strong. One of their properties is that they are strong. The house made from wood, really thick wooden beams, is strong and the roof's not going to fall down. Same thing with the ladder, that metal is strong so the man can stand on top of it and it won't collapse. Would you like to climb a ladder made from paper? I don't think so. Some things are chosen because they are light. This suitcase is made from a material that is light. Can you imagine going to the airport with a stone suitcase? The person behind the desk would say, well, sir, your suitcase is too heavy. Even if you didn't have anything in it, a stone suitcase would be too heavy. Stone would be no good. We need something that is light. But sometimes stone would be good. Like this doorstop is made from stone. It's heavy, so it stops the door swinging open and closed. We put the doorstop down, and the door won't move. That's a great use of stone, and it's been chosen because it's heavy. And then the last one over here, this is a type of fabric as well. But this fabric hasn't been chosen because it's soft. This fabric has been chosen because it's waterproof. If you were going out in the rain today, and I gave you a paper umbrella, do you think you would stay dry? What about if I gave you a stone umbrella? Well, no, you're right, it might squash you. And that would be no good because it's too heavy. So this one is light and waterproof. Now tomorrow, 
you're going to become designers. I'm going to ask you to design something or some things, thinking about what you could make them from and why, thinking about their properties. Have a look on your class dojo a little bit later today because I've got another property challenge that you could try. We'll be thinking more about this science tomorrow. See you soon, everybody. Bye.